I've been all around the planet, all around this beautiful world of ours, and I'm going to tell you right now, there's still not a city that compares to Long Beach. And on the line, we have a Long Beach original. We're going to hang out and chat a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, Trayvon Cash, how are you, man? Hey, man, i like to say thank you for that uh, statement that you said about Long Beach. You never lied about that there, brother. Talk to me about what you know or remember about the Run DMC concert that turned into a riot. It was at the Long Beach um, Convention Center, and I think the 60s and the Insane got into it. I think it was 85 or 86. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, I was... I started gangbanging in 85 when I was 12, and uh, I wasn't old enough to make that concert, but I remember seeing basically all the, uh, all all my generation growing up right before me, which is my oldest brother, my oldest family members, and they were all going to that concert, and uh, yeah, it, it, it seems to us it was like the first, it was the first concert in Long Beach and the last concert, you know? <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. We had my boy Teddy Styles on recently he pretty much said the same thing that yeah we never had another hip-hop concert at a main venue like that you know you have your small spots in long beach that throw yeah. hip-hop shows and stuff but nothing to that magnitude man yeah so it was it because i heard conflicting stories but i guess the gist of it was the rolling six and the insane ended up getting into it and that just turned into a big melee uh, something about stealing people's seats and then they stole the wrong person's seat yeah yeah and and you know back during that time long beach was long beach you know what i mean so you know if the insanes kind of got into it that that means that the the 20s and and everybody who was part of the long beach card as well got into it you know so yeah that was part of the melee when when you have so much of a whole city get together and pretty much all of long beach got together to start you know warring with uh, uh the issue that happened that night and uh, yeah, that was something that was pretty big. It, it it looks bad, but you know, the the unity of Long Beach was something that was celebrated for that night. That's something that we look at. The unity of Long Beach that was celebrated that night. Uh, Eighty five is when you said you started banging. Twelve years old. From the best of your knowledge, when did the Rolling Twenties first make their appearance in Long Beach? Uh. For me, uh, I would say the early 80s, uh, 81, 80, 81, 82, because uh, Long Beach uh, prior to that was uh, you had like the Crazy Nines and you had like another set called the AC Deuces that was out. And, uh, you know, uh, Crippen, Crippen was just starting to hit Long Beach in the in the beginning of the 80s, you know, so um you had you had uh, uh, different family members and uh, uh, different individuals um, start up the insane in the twenties, right on Twenty First Street, right there, next to the King Park. And uh, you know, for me, uh, uh, eighty two is the earliest memory I have of uh, the insane Crips and the Twenty Crips being started in Long Beach. Okay. Okay. That's that's my earliest memory. That's my earliest memory. Okay. Yeah, I, I just remember my mom walking me to school, and probably like kindergarten, first grade, we lived off of Long Beach Boulevard and 21st. Um, there was Elm mm -hmm. Avenue right there, and I had to walk to Burnett Elementary every day. And I remember when my mom, when I first started school, my mom yeah. walked to me like, it was like a zigzag. She was like, all right, don't go down this street, because I was never yep. a gangbanger you know, or anything like that. But she would, she would take me, don't go down this street, go this way, don't go down this alley, make a left here instead. <laughs> I would have to go the long way. And then one day walking home, I'm like, man, forget that. I'm going to take this shortcut. And then, of course, I run into like 20 and things, and I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, um, for, for some of my family members, um, um, you know, I'm I'm related down to uh, Big Ernest, which is a uh, uh, someone who who also assisted assisted at starting out the Insane Crips on my uh, uh, on my uncle's side, and um, you know, all that area was uh, uh, was started out Insane Insane Crips was 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 pretty deep, you know, versus the Twenty Crips, you know, back then at least, you know, but uh, it uh. It was a challenging time, but I like to say a lot of lessons. You learned a lot of lessons in life during that time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, listen to mom. Shit. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, it was a lot of life lessons that I learned. A lot of it is by respectability too, because 
back in our day, I like to say Long Beach was a lot different because it wasn't like we was just out there starting starting shit with everyone. You know what I mean? If you really didn't fuck with us, we didn't fuck with you. But if you did fuck with us, then we was going to fuck with you back. So we was more counter punchers, you know. And it was a respect thing. If you respected everybody out there, you earned your respect. But if you didn't give any, most definitely you wasn't getting any. Uh, uh, you almost ain't Long Beach if you ain't went to Burnett. You know what I mean? You know, oh, uh, there it is. That's yeah. the neighborhood school that everybody at some point in their life, it seemed like that that you didn't have to have to go to Burnett, you know? And uh, yeah. shout out to all my Burnett people that didn't went to Burnett out there. I was blessed my kids had a chance to, to go there too. That's crazy, man. I, I remember my teachers, Ms. Munoz. I remember we, the 87 yeah. Whittier earthquake. It was the 87 Whittier earthquake, and I just remember yeah. being there. I was eating breakfast in in school, you know, whatever, and then just the earthquake happened, and I have very vivid, fond memories of that school. That's funny that you, oh, uh, man. of course, you know about Burnett, yeah. That's and that's dope. still, still, you know, those that school's still up and running, you know. I I, yeah. I found out that uh, when I think, when my daughter went there uh, about three or four years ago, you know, they still run an excellent curriculum. They still got excellent teachers there to still care, and that's the kind of thing we need still in the uh, – Regardless of, of what's going on in the uh, area, the teachers and everything mm -hmm. still had that love and care what they needed to raise the kids around there. We're coming up on the anniversary of the Rodney King beating, which led to the Rodney King riots. And, you know, when, mm -hmm. when everybody thinks of the, when everyone thinks of the L.A. riots, they automatically think of Florence and Normandy and things mm -hmm. like that. But it was going on in Long Beach. Too. Specifically, I remember yeah. a Lucky, uh, there was a Lucky's, I think it was on like, ah, God, I can't remember, maybe Atlantic, maybe Atlantic, and like, oh, I forgot, but it, I remember like part of that building got burned down and like little parts yeah. of it got burned down. What do you remember about Long Beach's take on the Rodney King riot? I remember all the free stuff, you know what I mean? Not for me in particular, oh, yeah. but I just say that I remember uh, it seemed like everybody I knew got something free, you know? So that was the first part of it. That's what I remember the most. But the, uh, of course, of course, the uh, anger and the aggression of society during that time of feeling that, that our judicial system let us down, that, that, you know, we, we have been spit and, sp and frowned upon and looked at as the bad guy as always. So, you know, the the anger with society of watching society blow up on itself was something to see. You know, you don't see that every day. And then to see the violence that, that people was willing to portray, you know, uh, it, uh, uh, it opened a lot of people's eyes into what was really going on into society where you can't keep sweeping things under the rug and you have to really look at things, you know. So the, the, the way that it challenged society is something that I did like because it brought out the, uh, it brought out things that we needed to talk about, you know, the, the, the violence that the, the police was doing. Cause I remember that a lot. The, the police really did whoop your ass in the streets. They really did rob you. They used to come up to you in Long Beach Police and tell you, we're not the police. We're the biggest gang in the United States, and we're the biggest exactly. craps. And they mm -hmm. really did act like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was during that time, I tell people you had to be almost desensitized to violence because you had to be violent to survive. I remember working with some people at work, and I used to tell them, I said, you know, growing up, Y'all may have been in the service, but I got shot at just as many times as y'all did, like, as if y'all was somewhere off in another country. But I got shot yeah. at here in my home, own country. And mm -hmm. and it's a it's a different thing when you have to, like I yeah. said, during those times, your head have to be on the swivel because you're walking around the streets and anybody can get you. So, you know, I'm, I'm thankful things got a little better, you know, but uh, mm -hmm. it, it was tough to make it through those times. You really had to be crazy. Yeah, yeah, and you said something that stuck out because, you know, people go to war, I have family who's gone to war and, and come back and they've seen some shit, but you know what, when you're growing up in certain neighborhoods across the country, you've seen some shit too, and, and just think about this, Trayvon, how many people in the hood probably suffer from things like PTSD, you know what I mean? Exactly, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, seeing, seeing someone's brain getting blown on, on, on a car, you know, any that shit. <laughs> 
And and those are the people in society who we need to be having in their jobs in different places in society. And they've been all, almost, you know, like, for me, you know, uh, changing over, getting back into society and not living that lifestyle, you know, it's hard for a lot of people to make that change, you know. And, and I get into a, into a work field and they still be gangbanging at work, you know. They'll they shoot you at work still, you know. So it's... <laughs> I tell yeah. you, you know, it's uh, we have a we have a lot of people that that uh that still live that lifestyle, and ain't nothing wrong with it until you understand and learn what it's really about. You got to really understand what it's about, and it's not really just shooting at the next man because you think he's just wearing a different color. Let's talk about something that happened around the same time. We're talking ninety-two, ninety-three. LB had a big presence on this particular. Tape that is to this day is one of my favorite rap tapes of all time. Uh, what do you remember about the banging on wax tape? We had Cino from the twenties. We had Domino was on there. Uh, yeah, do you remember yeah, that, anything um, specifically about that tape? I I love that uh, banging on wax tape. You know, and I'm still I'm a shoot, shout out to all my crips out there. But you know, uh, the blood side was a little harder, man. It seemed like I'd they were a yeah. little bit grimier on there. You know, <laughs> yeah. Or or maybe. Or maybe just for for me not being able, uh, a lot of us didn't get involved with hanging with a lot of bloods during that that time because you know in Long Beach it's all Crips, so yeah. banging on wax it really gave us a chance to hear the blood side of you. You know what I mean? And uh, they was uh, they was real nasty with it. I I love that CD. That's one of my favorite CDs of all time. It was uh, it showed it showed brothers that. Instead of shooting each other in the uh, streets, let's bang on wax, and we can we can use these lyrical shells and shoot at each other. So I respected that. I respected yeah, the thought yeah. behind that. I agree. It's definitely something positive for the time when it was just going crazy in, yeah, in, our, it, in our county. It, it may sound violent because they did say some violent things on that record, but when you think of the yeah. thought behind it that they were going to say everything they wanted to do in the streets, on that record, so they didn't do it in the streets. So I respect yeah. that. Yep, yep. I gotta say, man, I, I definitely agree with that. C note was one of my first crushes. I was in love with that one, man. I I got a lot of family that's um this blood uh, gang members, and I I always spent uh, every summer out there in the in the twenty blood neighborhood out there, and they. I used to always hear that Pyru love. They they pay, played that nonstop out there. So yeah. you know, I got. <laughs> shout out to my boy Red Rum, dude. Yes, yes. Pyro yes, Love is, is definitely out. my favorite song on there. But when I was driving through certain neighborhoods, I would always have to turn it down real low. I was you like, always had to turn it down. Nobody's thinking it. You, know? <laughs> you got to show that's that to you show a little respect. <laughs> that's funny to know, and that's that's good to know because I've heard other crips say this that they they bump that on the low too. So just shout out to. Shout out to Banging on Wax, man. I want to hear another Banging on Wax 2, 3, whatever they want to call it. You know what I mean? And let some brothers release some energy on Wax again. I 100% agree. And thankfully, we still have some of the main players. Unfortunately, Tweety Bird Loke just passed away. RIP to Tweety Bird Loke. But we still have nice a lot of the main players out there who are still active at this music thing. And I really hope they put this uh, put this together. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm putting... I'm putting things in people's ear, trust me, behind the scene. I know that's a lot what of I, people, yeah. That's what I want to hear. I know I'm talking to the mm -hmm. right person. What, Domino. Domino went on to have a few few songs um, that just blew up. Ghetto Jam. Oh, man. Sweet that's Potato Pie. It's all time, man. I don't care what I'm playing. I can put yeah. this song in anywhere. It don't matter. And it's going to get major love. I don't care where I'm at. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, man. He doesn't get enough props if you ask me. No respect to Nate Dogg. I love Nate Dogg, but he was Nate Dogg before Nate Dogg, too, if you kind of think about exactly. it. Exactly. He, uh, he was that pioneer that opened the door that, um, that you know, for, for brothers in the neighborhood, you ain't supposed to be singing and shit, nigga. What you mean? What you doing singing and shit? You know what I'm saying? So yep. he gave yep. he gave that thug R&B out there. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and he opened the door for that, for Nate Dogg to bring his sound through. You know what I mean? And and yeah, it was a blessing. I would love to hear some fresh Domino, man. But if not, I can listen to some old Domino the same way. I love that 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 album, dude. Real talk. And he had that it's long beat. He had a couple. Yeah, he, had, he, he 
Oh, oh man, man, I love that. <laughs> man. That's my playlist that I actually play, I pay for. You know, I got a, a little pay, playlist that I paid for on my Apple phone on, off of iTunes, and I actually bought those songs. You know what I mean? I ain't, I ain't need legal download, nothing. Those are tracks that I want to hear in a nice, proper... I want to support them. That's what you do. Support your people. The biggest rapper to come out of Long Beach, which is Snoop Dogg. In your opinion... Mm -hmm. Because I thought it was the coolest shit in the world when I just heard somebody say Long Beach on a song. I'm like, what? I'm like, and then I see this dude on the top of the VIP, and I'm like, two blocks away it from was, the VIP. It was the um, it was the recognition that I felt like the uh, brothers in our neighborhood deserved. You feel me? Mm -hmm. It was uh, he he came out and he gave the energy. He 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 told the story, and he gave he gave uh, a face to the people of Long Beach. And that's what we respected. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah. And 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 he did that. And that's what we needed at the time for people to understand who we was as a, as a people. That that we a little different than LA. We're a little different than everybody. We got a little different vibe. And we respected yeah. Snoop for bringing that vibe out. Most definitely, dog yeah. pound. Yeah. And he 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 put he gave the Long Beach attitude and sound and everything. The, he was perfect for it because he's so laid exactly. back. Exactly. That yeah, was Long our, Beach. Were, yeah. That was our blend. That was our flavor. You know, it was a little bit of this. It was a little bit of that and a little bit of this. And you add it all up. That was Long Beach. And that's what he gave him. I respect that. I still love his sound yeah. to this day. I can't wait to mess yeah. fuck with him, on, you know, on a given day. Yeah, yeah. Well, shit, I've, I've heard conflicting stories and I've seen YouTube videos or people from the you know, to the 20s or whatever saying that you can't come back to Long Beach and then I see him releasing videos where I can come back anytime I want to and and what uh, what is his current situation with, with Long Beach and more importantly at uh, the 20s? It's, it's, it's where it always started is like what I always said it started at respect and, and when you respect you get the same respect back, you know. The thing, the thing with Snoop was, was that people just felt they wanted more than what he was given. And sometimes you can't expect more because he gave a lot. You know what I mean? It's like when someone opened the door, I can't hold your hand and walk, walk you through there too. But, you know, when you do get into those positions in society, when people look up to you, they expect for you to do a lot of things. And they expect for him just to be a little bit more outspoken and being there for him and assist and help them on different different things to help people come up, you know. And, uh, he, you know, people can't be there for everyone, you know. You have to thank him for what he's done. And, and, and the door is open. It's for us to walk through it, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Snoop, Snoop can still, uh, uh, he f*** with the right people. And it's always other people yelling what someone else can't do and this, this, and that and trying to make themselves blow up bigger on the internet and this, this, and that. But um, Snoop fuck with the right people. He can touch bases in the, in, in the neighborhood anytime he wants to because he fuck with the right people. And, and it's a lot of people saying what he can and can't do, but that's, that's just talk. You know what I mean? It's just talk. He, he he do what he's supposed to do. You know what I mean? It's like people asking the president to come down here and shake their hand here. The president doing what he's supposed to do way up there. You know what I mean? Sometimes he can't come down and shake everybody's hand. What up, though? Now, I've been on my Martin Luther King uh, peaceful, you know, getting ready for the Million Man March, basically. Trying to be very peaceful and Really not paying attention to the hate and all the negativity and the energy that's been going on. But um, my folks got at me and told me, they said, man, you've been really acting like Martin Luther King lately. We want to see Malcolm. So Malcolm is here to address all of this negative energy that's going on. First of all, all you niggas talking that shit about Snoop can't come to the hood, he can't do this. I can do whatever I like, when I like. Second of all, you niggas is 50 years old. You can't get a job, cuz? 
You mad at me, cuz? Cuz I won't help you no more? Cuz I can't do nothing to help you no more? Cuz I'm focused on helping out the kids and putting football programs and doing positive things in the hood? You mad, cuz? You mad? Cuz I won't call you big homie? Cuz I'm 40 some years old and I refuse to call another nigga big homie that ain't got a job, that ain't got a fucking car, but mad and jealous at me? Because of what I'm doing, trying to blemish my name and my character. Because I am the LBC. And me and my young homies, we got a great relationship. And furthermore, I just want to let y'all know that uh, to get out a real man is a conversation, not to be trying to Facebook bang and try to get injunctions and lawsuits or whatnot. So in a minute or two, me and you will be able to holler face to face like you really don't want. But you're going to get that. You're going to get that face to face with me. And I'm going to give you the intellect that you totally deserve. Because you cannot disrespect a king. I'm the king of Long Beach, nigga. I made it fashionable for niggas to bang the dub. I made it universal, motherfucker. I'm the nigga that took the set around the whole globe. Yeah, that's me. That's who. But now I'm doing positive things now. I'm enlightening homies and showing them how to get it a different way. That's what real big homies do. I refuse to put a pistol or a sack in my little homie's hand. I put a mic in his hand, or an inbox, or a drum machine, or maybe a video camera. That's what I do. I enlighten my young homeboys, because I know the truth. Nigga, ain't none of you niggas put me on the set, and ain't none of you motherfuckers gonna kick me off the set, motherfucker. Yeah, nigga. Big Snoop Dogg. Don't get it fucked up. We just passed the one-year mark of the murder of Nipsey Hussle, um, someone who is, uh, is bound, was bound to do greater things. How could something like that have been prevented, in your opinion? I don't think uh, anything like that can ever be prevented. You mean, because, because as a society, we have to look at each other. Everybody has to be accountable for each and every of their own actions. And and even though, you know, as much love as he showed out there, see, that was one of the things that a lot of people from Long Beach look at. The 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 image that, MC, that Nipsey Hussle portrayed is the image that we expect for most rappers to portray out there. Those are the leaders who we expect, who we expect to lead us. Those are the examples. When you go back and you give back to your neighborhood, but you can never stop and never stop and end envy and jealousy from the next man. So for as much good as he done, all it takes is still is one man to end that all good. So you can never end that. The only thing you can always do is just constantly preach to each man that that's there's no need to end that type of life. There's no need to be jealous towards someone like that. You don't you don't. You don't hate and jealous on someone you emulate and then you become to get the things that you that you want in life too. And you can't really stop that because there's always going to be someone but you can always preach positive against it. I love the way he stood up. Because like most of our leaders they know they're going to see a lot of jealousy and envy from in individuals and saying this and that. But you have to you have to stand above it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, RP to this that one, uh, that one hit me pretty hard. That one hit me pretty hard. That yeah. One, that was rough. <clears throat> that was and, so uh, rough. I, I, I like to say, even though Nipsey, rest in peace, is gone, the thought and the energy and 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 what he left is never gone. And that's mm -hmm. what, what we got to yeah. gotta more. Not, we got more. I love to see our rappers emulate how he did. Come up, come up out of the streets and realize not to lead the streets, but to give back and assist and help the streets. Mm -hmm. Because only in yeah. helping the streets do you help society. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He, thankfully, he left uh, a lot. It, of course, it sucks when someone has to die for this to come out, but he made a positive impact on this world that's going to be here for decades to come. I mean, it yes. started with his hood, his hood and um, I was yes. eight trays, I believe. They got they they did their true thing, yep. you know, for a minute, um, which was really cool and big in LA. If you know anything about 
gang history in LA. I mean, that is huge. That was huge to see the uh, the gangsters and the uh, O's get along like that. That was huge to see Crips and Bloods to start to get along like that. That's why I say we can, you can never stop what happened. But one, one thing we can never do is forget and keep living on that positive image, what he left. Takashi 6 9 was released, uh, recently released from prison. He's already trolling. He changed his ID thumbnail to him, <laughs> to him eating cheese on a mouse trap. Uh, basically trolling the fact that he's a snitch. You know, in, in hindsight, you know what, two years later almost, what are your general thoughts on the whole Takashi? You should just, uh, you know, just go off and just find somewhere else, something else to do. And he's like someone, you should, you know, you, you've already did your send me the bull and everything else. Uh, I guess what, who would pay, you know, to even really want to even, I mean, his music wasn't that good. I mean, I can find a hundred people just parked on a park bench. They can give me the same sound. You know, so to me, it's. He, to me, he's another person lost in this era, in the, in the era where the morals have been lost, the leadership in our so-called rappers, our leaders are, have lost. He's another one that's lost again. You feel me? He, he represents everything which is kind of bad with this society. That I'll tell on you, I'll snitch on you, I'll try and make money off of you, I'll hustle off of you. Everything that's bad, fraudulent, greed, he kind of represents that, you know? And... uh. So I guess maybe there is a market for people that want to buy that, you know, <laughs> but I'm not the person. What are your thoughts in general on rappers who join gangs or align themselves with gangs after they become famous? Like the Little Wayne, like the Chris Brown, the Soldier Boy, combining themselves with Fruit Town and, you know, Tupac, you know, even going back then to him joining MOB or whatnot. Well, what are your thoughts, thoughts on rappers? My, my thoughts is the same as all the, always. If it's genuine, it's genuine. If you're doing it for publicity and this, this, and that, then, of course, you're just like the guy who was paying the fake like somebody was beating him up when it wasn't nobody trying to beat him up. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, if, if if you're genuine and that I joined it and that, hey, these some brothers that I've quit and I'm, I'm, you know, this is what this is who I am. This is what I do. Then I can respect that and regardless when you joined it before or after. But uh, if when you join it, just to try and bolster yourself to make it to make it look like you got street cred. You know, that's what they're doing now. They join it now to. To make it look like they're somebody and they look like they have street cred. It's almost like they're buying street cred from a couple guys. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. of course, when you use it up under that circumstance, yeah, you, you're, you're, you're being nothing but another uh, uh, actor rapper, you know, uh, uh, act out your script. Yeah. Do you think? Honestly, because you're on the inside, you know, when I talk about inside, I mean, you were, you were banging, you know, doing your thing. And w do you think there's a lot of extortion going on with rappers and, and certain gangs? That is something that uh, has been talked about and has been done before. Yeah. 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 People, it's just like anywhere in society. If I know dirt on you and this, this and that, hey, you know what, I'll, uh, that's, that's kind of like the, you know, the Donald Trump way that he say too. He'll if he got dirt on you, I'll use that to, you know, manipulate my way up a little higher. And that's the same same way in the uh, in the rap industry. You know what I mean? It's a lot of it's a lot of backstabbing out there. And I like to say yeah. that there's no lie about if you're a rapper and you ain't sitting up there with with millions and millions in, in your pocket, believe me, you're probably one of the respectablest people out there. That's why, because you really have to sell yourself out a lot to get up there. Man, man, preach, dog. That's so, that's so true. So true. I, that's one thing you will find out in the <clears throat> industry. And, and we, we, society is looked upon to look at how much money is inside the person's bank account. So they look at old Jay-Z, he's got X amount of dollars in his bank account. But they don't realize in this society 
and how they keep telling you how you got to sell out to move up. The more money in your bank account usually is the more selling out you've done. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. I want to jump back into Long Beach. Uh, growing up in Long Beach, um, we have the second highest population of Cambodian people next to Cambodia. I, I'm mm-hmm. a history nerd, so I happen to know that shit. Um, and I actually, growing up, a few of my good friends were Cambodian. We yeah. grew up around, you know, a lot of a lot of Asians and Cambodians. Talk to me about, uh, you know, some of the Asian gangs in Cambodia, in Cambodia, some of the Asian gangs in Long Beach, and you know how how we interacted with them. It, you know, me being from twenties, um, it was a. Uh... It was a blessing because we didn't get we didn't have a lot of issues with the Asian gangs. We actually got along with a lot of the Asian boys and, and uh, okay. gangs out there. So we didn't have a uh, an an issue with them. Which and because of that, it gave us a chance to understand and get to know them. And that was something that uh, shout out to all my Asians out there, man. I love them more than they love themselves too, man. There's some good people out there. That's what uh that's what Long Beach is a good blend a good blend of people you know out there when you get to understand them you know it's like any other family you have your issues with these people and their people but you know what as a family is a good understanding it's a lot of love out there and uh yeah be- and because of you know my neighborhood didn't didn't uh have a war issue or you didn't have you know issues with the asian gangs i got to hang out with quite a few of them get to know got to know quite a few of them yeah shout out to all my asian boys yeah. out there they make their mark out there. It's like everybody. One thing I tell them about people, everybody in Long Beach, they've earned their respect. You know what I mean? They've earned their respect, and and that's 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 one of the best statements I can say. Cause we went through a lot of years of the of the of it being flooded with drugs, flooded with gangs, flooded with 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 crime, and and to still see that it's still going, and that there's still a lot of love out there. I love going out there. We also grew up around a lot of Samoans. Um, Samoans, yeah. to me, when growing up, like, I would go over to their house, and they treat you like family, biggest smiles yep. in the world, love, all love, just all love, and, and you feel the good vibes in the air. But once you feel one of them, oh, it's gone. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, uh, I, I moved out here from, from uh, out of California to Vegas, and I tell you, man, I work at the Ghost Bike Casino, and shout out to all my uh, Samoans out there from Carson, not of Long Beach, that I, that then migrated out here with me. Yeah, I, that's why I say most people don't understand that Long Beach blend. We had a blend of Cambodians. We had a blend of different Asians. We have a blend of Filipinos. We had a blend of whites, blacks, Hispanics. We had a blend. Yeah, we... That's why we're a little different because we were able to blend with a lot of different cultures and get to understand a lot of different people. And in the end, we found out that we kind of the same and we kind of like girls with big booties too. <laughs> That's so true, man. So true. We should have one more question for you and then we'll wrap it up and I'll give you a chance to plug or, you know, promote anything you want. Most definitely. Um, I've always been curious, how did the 20s pick up the Steelers colors? Oh man, it uh, it's like it went back to that P hat, and uh, it 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 is something that some like like the OGs put together. It's, I don't, I can't even tell you, man. But you know what? I'm glad yeah. they done it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to whoever thought that idea. But you know what? Now that you said it, I'm going to have to do some investigative reporting myself and find out who did that. You feel me? Word Thank up, you for man. agitating Word my up. brain. Because I didn't even know that. That's, those are, people don't realize, you know, knowing the history of your neighborhood that you come from is giving you a background in the gentleman who was there prior to you. None, none of them was perfect. None of us is perfect. But you know what? We all we all try our best and we live by the morals who we were taught by. And I'm, and I'm hoping we go back to a lot of those strong morals because that's what's wrong with society. We so moralists and we need mm-hmm. to get back to some of those morals. Yeah, yeah. Real talk, man. Well, dude, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. This is one of my favorite um, chats I've had in a long time. You know, I always love just talking about my hometown and you have good vibes. I love your, your 
outlook on life and things like that. I'd love to have you on in the near future, maybe in you know a couple months or something like that, for uh, for another round. You already know it's a uh, uh, it's a blessing. I, like I said, I was thankful when I looked inside my inbox and you gave me the chance and opportunity to hop on here and speak my mind and, and uh, not only represent myself, but to represent the people who assisted at raising me, my family, my friends, all of Long Beach, all, all my mm -hmm. people out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Anything you want to promote or do you want to just, are you good? I'm a... Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, all my families and friends out there on the east side of Long Beach out there. Keep doing what y'all doing. My mom's Melinda. Uh, I wonder if y'all get a chance and opportunity. You know, uh, Trayvon Cash on um, Facebook and Trayvon Cash on Instagram. Y'all can check out my music there. You know, I'm blowing up slowly but surely. I'm earning my stripes like I'm supposed to. You feel me? And I'm talking about that real stuff, that real life stuff. The stuff I like to say, the stuff you don't get paid to talk about, but the stuff we're supposed to be talking about. You feel me? I, I agree, my man. Well, I'll talk to you soon. You stay healthy. Hope your family stays healthy through this whole coronavirus thing, and I'll be uh, chatting with you soon, all right? All the time. Stay blessed and stay healthy. Your health is your wealth. Yes, sir. Peace, man. Talk to you later. Take it easy. Later.